No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Limelight, makers of professional lighting for independent filmmakers. My Road Reel International Film Contest. Enter at myroadreel.com. Hey, this is John here with Steve over at Adobe. Uh, so Steve, tell me a little bit about what's new with uh, After Effects. Yeah, I think it's been a really good release. We've had a lot of response so far, so we're really, really happy with the way that's going. This year, we really wanted to focus on the integration between After Effects and Premiere Pro. So as an example, we wanted to take, okay, if I want to be able to author a template in After Effects, I shouldn't have to jump over to After Effects just to make simple changes to it. So as an After Effects artist, somebody can focus on, say, a project that has a lot of compositions, only a specific composition may be editable in Premiere Pro, but the Premiere Pro editor can just literally go in and change, say, things like text um, through live text templates. Or when you're backing and forthing between the two applications, uh, we put some After Effects technology directly into Premiere Pro via our masking and tracking. So in Premiere Pro, you can you can basically apply things like, say, the mosaic effect if you're blurring out a face. Uh, but you can use the tracker that's now in After Effects directly inside of Premiere Pro to do that kind of stuff. So you don't have to jump over just to do simple tasks. But then if you want, and then, you know that was really from the, the context of, of edit, editorial and storytelling. But if you want to go crazier, you want to do more technical creativity and that kind of stuff. In the past, we used to, you were kind of penalized. Uh, if you wanted to bring your mask over, say, from Premiere Pro into After Effects, well, you couldn't, so you started right. again. Now everything seamlessly interchanges. So I start off in Premiere Pro, I say have that mask over the face, I apply the mosaic effect. Um, by a dynamic link, you can just bring that over in After Effects, the mask comes with it, the effect comes with it, and that's been really powerful. So I think, you know, be the integration between uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects this year has been really, really good. Uh, in terms of Premiere Pro, um, there's a lot of things that we focused on around new formats and all sorts of things like that. Master clip effects, this is something that we've heard all, for a long time from users. Right? They want to be able to apply something to a whole range in the timeline when it's one master clip right. without having to do it on each individual clip. Right. So, you know, those types of things I think are going to be really well received. Uh, speed grade also has that same capability, master clip effects as well. Plus the interchange again has gotten a lot more robust. We're also seeing a lot more integration with our creative cloud services. So things such as Cooler uh, and Typekit are now becoming first class citizens inside of After Effects and Premiere Pro. So especially coming from the After Effects side, which is dear to my heart, right. missing fonts. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. How do you really come in and be able to replace things? Well, our type kit service, which was predominantly for the web, is now coming into, you know, post-production workflows. So we're really happy about how that's going. That's great. So what are you working on next for possibly the next update? Just maybe you can give us some overview of possibly what some things you're working on. I think, you know, well, the good news is with Creative Cloud is that we've really been able to focus on specific workflow features. Not necessarily the, the, what we used to do, you know, tw every 12 to 18 months, right. when we were looking at the upgrade, we had to come up with a really whiz-bang thing. Now it's really streamlining, and that's why we've released almost, uh, gosh, 600 features over the last <laughs> year, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's been pretty crazy. Uh, there's obviously gonna be a continuation of that. But I also think that you're gonna see, you know, uh, a lot more, we started off with text templates in, in between Premiere Pro and After Effects. That's the beginning. Um, the, the story I like to kind of tell with that is when I started Adobe about three years ago, um, people were, as a guy who runs After Effects, they were like, hey, can you make After Effects easier to use? More editors will use it if that's the case. Yeah. And at the same time, the After Effects guys were like, whatever you do, don't change anything. And I was kind of like, eh, all right. Um, the interesting thing is I think by putting the technology into the right context and looking at it like when I'm the editor, I'm editing to tell a story. I don't, I'm focused on that story. I'm not necessarily focused on the technical aspects or maybe creatively playing with something, right, maybe, right. but I really want to go focus on that. So can we bring After Effects technology, say beyond text and that type of thing and look at it from that point of view? Vice versa for After Effects. It's, you can technically cre and creatively play. You can do things. You tend to work on smaller bits. How can we bring in stuff from say the editorial experience and make that a lot faster? How's the performance oriented around that? And I think with After Effects, we've been doing a lot of work uh, on just the performance of the application. So I think those are themes that you're going to be seeing from us downstream. So part of the, part of the goal is to make the programs even more easy to use and not have to necessarily leave each program, right. or even when you do leave each program, it's easier. You don't have to lose things between them. Look at it, look at it from this perspective. I think the, the, the number one theme for this is you know I can go to a VFX artist who does editorial work 
right? But does it make sense to jam, say, all of After Effects inside of Premiere? Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that it's really trying to focus on what is the context of what they're trying to accomplish at the time. And then can we, you know, a great example is what we did with the Warp Stabilizer. That started in After Effects. It was kind of heavy R&D for three years. We introduced it there first because we wanted to see what it could do. We brought it into the editor, into Premiere Pro, um, but made it very specific to the editorial experience. And then we released after that Warp Stabilizer VFX in After Effects, which gives you a whole lot more creative flexibility, but it's a lot more time. It's a lot more playing what works and what doesn't work. But in the editor, I just want to lock it down. I want to have a stable shot and go from there. So I think that's the and how the, the hub of what we do is Premiere Pro and bringing all of the different things, whether that's color via speed grade, audio via audition, visual effects and motion graphics via After Effects, they all interweave to that primary hub. Thank you.